forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So last week, last week we, uh, we were exploring the intro. We just did an intro into Moses' life. Um, and this week we're going we're gonna to continue with that a little bit. But you remember that Moses didn't go to Egypt, right? Remember he was born in Egypt, right? Um, he was a Hebrew boy born in Egypt. He was born at a time when, when the Hebrew, Hebrew people um, had, had grown to such numbers that the Pharaoh was afraid they were gonna, that they could, if they wanted to revolt, they might overtake the Egyptian army. And so he, wanted, so he decreed that all the Hebrew boys that were born would be thrown into the Nile River and either drown or be ate by crocodiles. Remember that, right? And so um, that, that's where we were at last week. We talked about that. Um, and in, as, in essence, the fact that what Pharaoh was really doing was he was taking God's boys, God's sons, and he was taking them and feeding them. He was sacrificing them to the Egyptian gods. Because remember, the Nile River and the crocodiles of the Nile were considered gods in the Egyptian world. Okay, and so um, they were actually sacrificing our God's people, the Hebrew pe- God's people, to to the worldly God people, uh, uh, the worldly gods. I mean, of the Egyptians, and so um, God did some cool stuff with that. Because what He did is He He He, um, he saved one particular Hebrew boy by the name of Moses. Right? Um, he saved this newborn, um, and, and and He saved him through. The Pharaoh's daughter, remember that? Um, he saved him through the Pharaoh's daughter, and not only did he save him through the Pharaoh's daughter, um, but, but he, also, he also used the Pharaoh's resources to bring, raise this child up, right? Because she took him home and she lived with daddy, right? And so we, we remember that, right? And so, um, he, so God not only, not only um, d- did he use Pharaoh's daughter to rescue Moses, to save Moses, who eventually would lead the, Egypt, the, the Hebrew nation free, right? Um, but but he, he uses the guy who decreed him to be killed, he uses his daughter to do it, and she uses her daddy's money to do to pay for the he, Moses's mom to nurse him and to to nurture him until she was ready to adopt him and and so um, so I mean God just goes like yeah you want to kill him but guess what check this out uh, I'm going to save him I'm going to use your daughter to do it and you're going to pay for it check it out right and so you know I think God's awesome do you think God's awesome Amen right. So that's just like I, I just love it. Eventually, Moses is adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, of course, and he, and he's raised in Pharaoh's palace. He's clothed by Pharaoh's uh, by with Pharaoh's clothes. He's fed off Pharaoh's table. He's he's trained. He's raised up. Everything he, he's educated all by Pharaoh, right? And so um, and ultimately, so that he could lead the Hebrew nation away from Pharaoh. Oh, man, I just love God. I just love the way he works. I mean, it's like, wow. So, so let's pick up where we left off last week. So that's, in essence, where we went last week. Um, and that was Exodus 2, 1 through 10 is what we went through last week. We're going to kick off with verse 11 this week. Uh, Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. Um, most scholars basically break this down. They say in, in verse 1, Moses was born. Uh, verse uh, uh, 11, he's 40 years old, okay? And he's finding out who he is, okay? And that's basically what they do. This is the first third of Moses' life. Remember, he lived for 120 years. And, and so this is the first 40 years in 11 verses. Tell me life isn't a quick trip, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> so, you know, it seems like every day, I, I just told the wife yesterday, I'm like, man, I can't believe how summer's already blowing, blowing in here and ready to rock and roll, right? And I'm just like, this year is just flying by. And then, well, this was only 11 verses and it flew by. So, um, but anyway, uh, uh, so they're in here though, obviously there's a lot of gaps in there that we have to fill in. And so um, what we need to know is, is Moses, uh, by this time, he's gone through these first 11, in these first 11 verses, he's, he's already gone through a number of crises. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been going on in his life. And, and we were talking about Celebrate Recovery just a minute. Well, okay, I was just a minute ago, right? Um, and, and, man, some of the stuff that he went through, man, he could have used CR. I'm just saying. Um, so uh, he um, went through a lot of things, transforming moments in his life that, that uh, he needed to get through in order for him to do what God had planned for him coming up, right? And so um, 
So let's start walking through some of this. Uh, we begin, begin with Moses' verse, uh, birth in verse 1, of course. Um, and, and when we begin with uh, Moses in verse 1, we, we are introduced to, and I'm sorry about my back. We are introduced to Moses the slave. Okay? Now remember, Moses, we talked about this, Moses didn't come into slavery afterwards. He was born, literally born into slavery. He didn't choose slavery. Um, it was, it's where he was born at. And so, um, see, because he's not born into the right family. He, he's not born into the right nationality. That, that's the whole reason that he's a slave. If he had been born Egyptian, he would be free. But yet he's born Hebrew, and therefore he's born into the wrong family. And, and um, um, so he doesn't have, have you ever noticed that some of us, we're, we're kind of like born in the wrong family? Have you ever noticed that? In fact, I would contend most of us feel at some point in time we were born into the wrong family. We were born in the family that didn't have enough authority in town, right? We did, we, they didn't have the right name, right? Hovalt was not a name that most people wanted. When I was growing up in our neighborhood, okay, because we had a reputation. So even when, when I came to town, when, I, when we moved to Davis when I was growing up, the whole vaults in Turner County already had a reputation, right? Moses, because he's a Hebrew, already has a reputation. See what I'm saying? And so we, we have this, right? Don't, have you ever wondered, have you ever thought, man, if I'd have been part of that family, man, we'd, had, man, we'd be eating steaks instead of hamburger helper, Right, and we're lucky when we had the helper part of it, right? And sometimes maybe it was just a hamburger and some noodles, right? I mean, th right? And so the reality is, and sometimes, well, I'm, man, I wish my dad was on the city council. I wish my dad was on the school board. I wish we had, right? Did we? Is there anyone in here who never in their life ever thought something like that? Like, man, if I was part of that, right? And we've all been there. And so Moses is 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 born into the wrong family, um, but but there's. There's more of us, I, I would contend this, there's more of us that were born in a trailer park than in the palace. And Moses was born in a trailer park, not in the palace, okay? Um, and, and, and at least we're closer to the trailer park. Maybe some of us don't want to admit that's where we're at, right? I mean, let's just be honest, okay? And I personally, I'm great with trailers, right? Lived in them uh, uh, um, and all that, so please don't take that personally, right? But I'm saying in the world we look at, live in today, right? You, you got trailer park, you got a palace, there's a whole huge chasm in between. Right, and and so Moses was born in the in the trailer park, so to speak. But he got moved to the palace by God's hand. Okay, so um, but but because of where he was born, how he was born, his nationality, Moses grew up not being safe, not feeling safe. Um, and so I, w I want you to understand something. Um, and you might want to write this down. When you allow the thing that gave you the gave you comfort to become the thing that confines you. You're not safe. When you allow the thing that gave you comfort to become the thing that confines you, imprisons you, you're not safe. And that's where Moses, he's, he's not feeling safe in the palace. Um, so um, each of us has either been, been currently, currently is or will be someday in that place where we know we're not supposed to be there, but we're feeling comfortable there. And we're, but we're not safe there, and we know it, right? And so um, I just want to give you some advice. When that happens, don't run from who you are. Don't run from who you are, okay? Um, Moses is a slave. Um, it's, it's just who he is, uh, and, and, he, and he needs to remember not to run from the fact that he was born a slave, he needs to remember that. He needs to embrace that. Um, the very thing that we find ourselves in bondage to, when we, when we come through that, that very thing that held us bondage will also, as we work through that, will also allow us to be able to help others break free from that. That very same thing is part of who we are. There's times we think, man, I wish I could do, have a redo. I wish we could do it over. I, man, if I could go back. And I tell people all the time, I don't want to do that. Because that's why I'm able to reach and visit with certain people because they've been through what I came through. So, so we don't run from it. I don't, I don't run from it. I'm not, is, is, is it things I go, I'm proud about? No, 
Not necessarily, right? It, it, in fact, most of the time, I would argue the things that I wanted to do over, I'm not proud about. But the reality is, it's part of who I am. It's part of what God had me come through in order to be where I'm at so I can reach others who are going through the same thing. Okay? So, so don't run from it. Um, Moses, is, his life is broken down into 40-year parts, okay? So the first 40 years is where we're at right now. He's a slave even though he's a, in Hebrew clothing and even though he's living in the palace. I, I got to help. I, I, Moses is, in the, is not an Egyptian. I don't care what clothes he's wearing, right? And I, I believe this wholeheartedly. Moses living in that palace knew he didn't belong in that palace, right? And I believe that everyone in that palace knew that Moses didn't belong in that palace. Think about this. Think about this. Pharaoh has decreed all Hebrew boys, newborns, to be thrown in the Nile, fed to the crocodile, right? And, and, and yet his daughter comes home and says, Daddy, 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 can I keep him? Right? He's like a little puppy, right? He's like, can I keep him? And, of course, what, what good daddy tells his little girl, no, right? I mean, let's be honest, even when you try, I mean, you, you try to be your best. No, no, okay, you know, don't give me those eyes, right? Uh, my girl's played me, I know, and so it's all right. But he, so, he, so he gives in, right, and allows her to keep this child that, that she's going to raise as her own, right? But he knows every time he walks by Moses, no matter what Moses is doing, that, that daddy's funding, by the way, no matter what he's doing, when Pharaoh, the Pharaoh walks by, he knows I decreed him dead. He should be dead every time he walks by him. And you know what happened. And you know every servant in that palace, even the slaves, right? Even the Hebrew slaves, they know he's, he don't belong here. He's not, he's not an Egyptian. He's no better than me. Right? I, I, I don't believe that o- Moses felt safe there. But when we're, when we're in that situation, here's the thing, right? When we're in that situation, rather than running from it, we need to own it. Okay? We need to own it. Okay? And that, that's what Moses had to do was own it. His life is broken into 40-year 40, uh, 40 increments. The first 40 years, he's, he's Moses' slave. Okay? And then, then there's uh, another block of 40 years and another block of 40 years that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, but but um, God's going to use us. No matter what block of our life we're in. His is, remember, he was 120 years old uh, when he died. And, and so it was 40, 40, 40. Uh, I don't know where you're at in life. But if, if, if it was a matter of, of him coming to know Jesus, him, him coming to know, I shouldn't say Jesus, not at that point, um, but, but him coming to know God, him becoming a Hebrew, um, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, that's the first 40. If that's the point, if that's the first third of my life, then I'm going to be about 150 years old when I die because I was almost 50 when I finally come to really know Jesus. Think about that. i got a little work in front of me. Baby, we're going to live a long time. Social Security going to be long gone. I'm just saying, right? That IRA, that thing's gone, man. I'm just telling you straight up, right? So, so the reality is, wherever you're at, maybe you haven't really figured out who God is. Maybe you haven't given yourself to him at this point. But if that's the point where it's at, maybe you just did it today. So what's your age? Take it times three. Now, I'm not saying you're going to live that long. And there's some of you are like, I hope not. And, uh, you know, but, but the reality is that's what it was for Moses in this time, okay? So, um, so we meet Moses, the, the, the slave, but now, now Moses, he's in the palace, um, uh, but he doesn't belong there, okay? And, and he knows he's not safe. The next one that we meet is Moses. We meet Moses. I'm sorry, I'm a very slow writer, but I'm learning, I'm practicing. We meet Moses the foreigner. Moses the foreigner, okay? Um, only reason I could spell that is because it was one of, my, one of my favorite rock bands from the 80s. 
I had a lot of their cassettes, and that will date me too. And so, um, so kids are going, what? What's a cassette? <laughs> so um, show them a picture of one, give them a pencil, see if they know what to do. Um, so, uh, <laughs> and the ones who are laughing are the ones who know what to do. So, um, so anyway, he knows right now, Moses, he's in the palace, and, and he's a foreigner, and he knows he's a foreigner in that palace. He understands that, um, and, he, and he's living there, but he really doesn't belong there, and he understands that, okay? And so he's living more of the I'm not home blues. I'm not, I'm not where I belong blues, right? And so um, some of you might find yourself somewhere where you don't belong right now. Some of you may be in, in, in a situation, in a place in life where you know that's not where you're supposed to be, but it's where you're at. And you might be struggling with that right now. You might be realizing I'm a foreigner where I'm at. This isn't where I'm supposed to be, right? And so uh, Moses knows that. He understands that um, as, as we uh, have read in, in, in verse 11, right? Um, and so, but it... Can I be okay with you? There's somebody, or can I be honest with you, I mean? Are you okay with that? Um, there's someone in here, I guarantee it, there's someone in here who right now is in that spot. You know, you might have just a second ago said, oh, that's not me, but right now there's someone in here. There's at least a someone in here who's in that place. I'm, I'm, this is where I'm at. This is not where I belong. This is where I'm at, but this is not where I end. This is where I'm at, but this is not where I stay. I know I shouldn't be here, but this is where I'm at. Right? We understand that what we're doing, where we're at, we know it's wrong. We know it's not where we're supposed to be. And, and right now, you're, you may be, there's people in here, there's at least a person or two in here who are saying to themselves right now, crud, he's talking about me. But I just want you to know, it's okay. God loves you. I love you. We're going to get through this. We're going to help you with that, okay? Okay? And so Moses is going to help us through that. I want you to think about this. Don't get lost where you are. Don't get lost where you are. Don't get lost in the fact, I know I'm where I'm not supposed to be. I know I'm doing what I'm not supposed to do. So I'm just stuck. Did the world want you to do that? The world wants you to say, hey, it's too bad. Sucks to be you. This is where you are. You can't get out of it, right? You can't overcome that addiction. There's no way you can be a good Christian because you haven't been a good Christian your entire life. There's no way. You're just lost. You're, just, oh, you're defeated, right? The world will tell you that. But I'm here to tell you, it's not true. It's not true. God doesn't believe that. So don't get lost in where, you're, where you are, Okay? Can I give you some uh, other advice? See, we left you a big blank on that one side. Did you notice there weren't very many fill in the blanks? I'm going to give you some other stuff to put in there, okay? I want you to work today, okay? Where you are isn't where you're going. Where you are right now, that's not where you're going. God's got a plan. He's calling you. He's preparing you. He's getting ready to send you. Where you are right now is not where you're going. Where Moses is in that palace is not where he's going. And if we know the whole story, we understand that. And if we don't know the whole story, guess what? We're going to share that, okay? But that's not where, that's not where you're at. We, now, where we're at, what we're going through, we need to understand it, okay? What we're going through, what we're dealing with, we need to understand it. But we don't, we don't have to stay. Don't worry. We don't have to stay there because it's not where we're going, okay? And so um, God's preparing you for the next step. He's preparing you for the next place, the next, next project, if you will, that he has for you. Okay, and, and, and he did the same thing with Moses here. How, how did Moses know how to run an army? How did he know how to lead an army? He learned it in the palace. How did he know how to lead a government? He learned it in the palace. How did he know how to lead people? He learned it in the palace. God put him in the palace. God took him from the Nile and put him in the palace that Moses would be able to be prepared to do what God desired for him to do so that the Pharaoh would pay for Moses to learn how to lead God's people away from the Pharaoh. And God's got a plan for you. 
And he's raising you up. He's trying to teach you. You have things to learn in the place where you're at right now that you can go forward and you can lead God's people away from eternal hell and into eternity with God. Amen? Right on. Do you believe me? Do you not believe me? Thank God no one doesn't believe me. I'm just, uh, well, that or you're hiding it, right? He's like, oh, I'm stuck here. <laughs> I'm just like, we'll get you out of there, okay? So, um, but look, look, that's the reality. He, he's going to prepare us for everything we go through, every trial, every challenge, every, every struggle that we go through, all the yuck and muck that we go through, the Nile that we're in, stuck in a basket. That is God saying, guess what? This is only where you're at right now. It's not where you're going. I have a plan for you. And, and I can prove to you he's got a plan for you. Can I help you with this? You, take a little test with me, okay? I mean, everyone, could you do, do this? Were you able to do that? Anyone in here not able to do that? <laughs> okay, no hands are up. Oh, well, one. <laughs> well, buddy, you're breathing. I can see it. And so uh, uh, come as the little children. Amen. And so look, if you're drawing breath, what do I say all the time? I got breath. I got a pulse. God's got a day full of opportunities before me. I woke up with that breath. I woke up with that pulse. He's got a day full of opportunities before me. God has a plan for you, and he has a plan for me as long as you're drawing breath. Because when he's done with us, when we're finished here, when our work is completed, he's taking us home. Yes, absolutely, let's go. I'm ready. I'll, I'll go now. I'm good. But guess what? He's got work for me. He's still preparing me for the next step of my journey. He's still preparing you for the next step of your journey. He was preparing Moses for the next step of his journey. He's preparing in the first block of 40 years. He's preparing him for the second block, which will prepare him for the third and final block. Okay, and, and so, so he's preparing you and he's preparing me and it's okay, it's okay if we don't, if we don't understand it yet, it's okay for us to, to start working on understanding it because we do need to understand it. We're going to need that in time, okay? I want you to say this with me. Don't be identified by what you do. Nope, that's my wrong one. Ha, ah, you jumped on me. Um, where, <laughs> did I, oh, I did, ah. Yeah, so I want you, I'm sorry. I should have turned the page sooner. Um, a pastor gets lost once in a while. <laughs> That's why God gave me a wife. I'm like, all right, thanks, baby. So, um, but uh, repeat with me this one, though. We just filled it in. Where, where you are is not where you're going. I want you to repeat that with me. You know why I want you to repeat that with me? Because I don't want you to miss it. Where you are, where, it's where I am is not where I'm going. Where I, y'all ain't very good at repeating. Where I am is, is not where I'm going. It doesn't help when I confuse you, does it? So, all right, but hey, look, where I am is not where I'm going. Okay, you need to believe that. You need to buy into that. You need to understand that, okay? And so, so um, uh, Moses walks out. He sees his Hebrew people, he walks out of the palace, right? And I want you to kind of envision this with me, okay? Visualize with me. Uh, walking out of the palace, I'm dressed in, Moses is dressed in, in Egyptian clothing, but he looks like all the Hebrews he sees out there being put to hard labor and being beaten by the Egyptians, right? And he sees them and he says, I, I, I look like them, but I'm dressed like them. But I'm not like them, I'm actually like them, right? And he's understanding, wait a minute. This is where he, he, he understands something even more important for us. Um, he, he, if he stays in these clothes, if he stays in these clothes, he's in the clothes of the oppressor. This is where we meet Moses, the oppressor. And here's the thing, if you're dressed as the oppressor, you are the oppressor. If you're dressed like Christ, you are like Christ. Amen? Okay, so right now he's dressed as the oppressor. He walks out, he's dressed, this is who, this is who he looks like, this is who he's acting like. Even though he knows he's not like them but he's like the people out here, okay? And so, so um, in his heart, he's, he's like, I know I'm not right. 
I'm not right. And some of y'all, right now, you're going through some stuff, and right now you're, you're saying, I'm not right. In fact, I would contend that probably all of us, in some area of our life, we're saying, I'm not right. Right now, I'm not right. I'm claiming this Christianity thing, but this don't look like Christ. Right now, you're saying, I'm not right. And it's okay to say that. Because we have the opportunity to get right with God every time we can go. And we can get our life right. Okay, Moses is saying, I, I, I'm not right. I know that I'm not right here. He knows he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. You know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, but that's okay. We're going to work on that. This is the moment that you realize that you're trapped in sin. The moment you realize, I'm not right. I got something going on. I'm not right. That's when we realize we're trapped in sin. See, if, if we know where we are, is it right? If we know what we're doing, is it right? If we know that and we do not change that, we choose to live in sin. And Moses has a choice to make. Will he continue to live the same life he's already lived, just like you and I, will we continue to live the life we already are living in sin or will we choose to step out of that and choose to step into Christ here's the thing I want you to understand don't be identified by what you do don't be identified by what you do okay don't don't let what what fills your wallet be what the world sees okay don't don't let your what you what your your um your net worth identify your self-worth okay our worth is not in our stuff it's not in our worldly possessions it's not in our money it's not in our job okay our, our worth is in who we are in christ okay and, and that's something we really have to get to. We have to understand that. And, and I lived that life for a long, long, long time. And I even struggle with it now sometimes because it was always just make more money, make more money, make more money. I don't worry about making money anymore. But I have to, I have to actually, and you can ask my bride, and she'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, there, the, I, I, and you can ask my, you can ask my daughters. I had a daughter ask me one day, when do I get my dad? I'm tired of the pastor. I'm just as weak as you are, but I have to choose day in and day out. God, obviously, as a pastor, I mean, wh where am I supposed to? This is my heart, right? And he, he didn't call me into ministry um, just to say, well, God, you're just for Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Right, he's it's twenty four seven, but there's also that I have to make a priority for my bride. I have to make a priority for my children. Ask my bride; I've been hounding her already about uh, when we t when we go on a vacation this summer because I I commit two weeks to her every year, and the ones when we take the whole family goes to the Black Hills. That one's on the books, but I keep saying, "When we doing your birthday trip?" Yeah. Right, because I want because it means it's important that I show her how much I love her, that I dedicate that to her. It's for her. We have to remember that. And guys, we suck at it. We do. We're horrible at it. We get all wrapped up in our stuff, our work, our thing. And, and ladies, guess what? You're not too far behind us anymore. It used to be. But there's a lot of ladies trying to scale that corporate ladder and trying to get that all going on. And I got to earn this. And I got I to gotta outdo the guys. Right? And there's that glass. There's that, that window. Right, ladies? And, and there's no one can argue. All you got to do is look at the stats. There's no one can argue. Women get, women get paid less for the same job as men. But the reality is that, that we're, trying to, we're trying to break that, and we get so committed to that, and we fail to be committed to our family. We fail to be committed to God. We fail to, in those areas, right? So, so you see what I'm saying with this? You understand where I'm at, right? Um, is that, that man, to live in, don't let our wallet be who we are. Don't let our stuff be who we are. That stuff is unimportant. I don't care if you got three houses. Guess what? God don't care if you got three houses. You know what? All that stuff you've been acquiring, you've been buying, guess what? It's not really going to go in the U-Haul with you 
when you, when you load up in that hearse, it's not going to be with you. And if your concern was about the stuff, you won't be with your family when you're gone either because you weren't with them when they were here. That's just a harsh reality, and I'm not saying that if you mean I, I love you. I want you to spend time with your family. I want you to grow. That's part of the whole thing with us shifting uh, uh, um, fires and families to Wednesday night is because I, I want you to be healthy and full and, and whole in Christ, and you're doing that. You know, We have people who are doing that on Tuesday nights, um, and, 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 but I want you also to be able to have that time committed to your families on Wednesday nights and not have to make that choice. You don't have to choose, do I get healthy in God's eyes or do I stay dedicated to my family? No, you can do both if all we do is just shift to Wednesday night. Done. Because both are important. Okay? Hope I haven't lost anyone on that. But don't be identified by your net worth and don't, don't give your life away to a job and when God's already given you this incredible gift called your family and salvation. And we, give up, we, we, we go for the job instead of our salvation, for crying out loud. And we, we, we don't get it. And I lived it. I lived it. it. Ask my bride. A lot of years that I worked 70, 80 hours a week. Boom, just work it. Well, we needed more money. I quit working all them hours. Guess what? We had just as much money. We didn't have as much money as far as in our account. But guess what? We just didn't spend as much money. We still made it just fine on less hours, a lot less hours, Right? And we were better because we were healthier. Okay? So, anyway, um, one thing, uh, um, you'll never find righteousness until you acknowledge your wrongness. You will never find righteousness until you acknowledge your wrongness. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, you know you're not supposed to be doing. You cannot become righteous if you stay within your wrong or if you try to continue to justify your wrongness and call it righteousness. Because the only one you're lying to is yourself. Because God knows the truth. And you can't do the right thing until you know what the wrong thing is. You can't do the right thing until you know what the wrong thing is. See, sometimes we're doing something and we just don't realize it's wrong. But once it's pointed out, guess what? Now we know what's right and what's wrong, and now we have to make that decision. We have to choose. Are we going to do what's right or are we going to do what's wrong? Are we going to stay in the palace where we don't belong or are we going to get out? So Moses goes out. He sees the, the Egyptian beating the Hebrews. He sees how hard the Hebrews are being forced to labor as it is. And, and, and he has a choice. He has a choice to make. Because um, he can either, there, there, there's, he, he can do something about it and come out of the palace, eventually, essentially because of it, come out of the palace. Um, or, or he can just stay in the palace and just ignore it and walk back in and pretend he's an Egyptian. Right, um, And so what he does is he kills the Egyptian and buries their body in the sand. In verse 12, he, he kills them and buries their body in the sand um, and, and tries to hide it. Okay, So there's two things that are going to happen out of this. There's two options. One is, is um, the, Egyptian, or the, the Hebrew people, I mean, are going to see Moses and they're going to go, Oh, Moses stood up for us. He's one of us. He's with us. And they could get behind him and they could rise up and they could have a rebellion and they could overthrow the Egyptians and gain their freedom, right? Or even enslave the Egyptians, right? And so they could do that, but that's not what happened. Or the other option B is that Pharaoh can find out and want to kill Moses and the, the Hebrews reject Moses and like, he's not one of us. Look at his clothes, right? Um, and, and they could turn their backs on him. And then, jo then Moses is not safe anymore. And that's what happens, right? And so uh, Pharaoh finds out that he killed the Egyptian. Um, and Moses becomes in danger once again. Um, so he's uh, not safe once again. So we have Moses standing there in his Egyptian clothing, watching this Egyptian beat one of the Hebrews. He kills him. And this is where we meet Moses. Moses. 
Moses the Hebrew. This is where we meet Moses the Hebrew. In fact, actually, let me, this is where we meet. I hope I'm writing this big enough for y'all. Moses. Moses, the child of God. This is where we meet Moses, the child of God. Um, this is where Moses, that 40 year comes in, right? This is the end of one block, the beginning of another. Um, see, because Moses' life is, is, is the 40 years coming up to this. And that's what the, the, the um, scholar, biblical scholars and stuff will tell you is verses 1 through 11 is, is, is uh, Moses born to Moses is now 40 years old and becomes a Hebrew. Okay, and so um, uh, in, in verse 12, he becomes a Hebrew and he starts that next 40 years. And that next 40 years is when he runs and he becomes a shepherd in the Midian. Um, and and then, then the 40 years after that is where he leads the people, the Hebrew nation, away from Pharaoh for 40 years. And so um, Moses, uh, he had to make a choice and he did. And he, and he did what God would have him do. His work in the palace was finished. Okay, his work was in the palace was finished. Um, so, for that next forty years, I just gotta I gotta believe that Moses, for that whole time, he's he's the shepherd, right, out in out with the flocks. I just imagine that fear is still there because. Moses is still learning. He's still growing, and we'll look into that more as we go forward. But, but um, for 40 years, he spends, uh, I believe he spends watching for, to see, is there going to be an Egyptian soldier come and run me through? Are they going to come with a spear or a sword, right, and sneak up behind me and take me out kind of thing, which never happened. God protected Moses because God had a plan for Moses, right? And so, um, but, but I, I believe that that would be the case for him, that man of living, you know, because as we read our scriptures, we understand that man, M Moses wasn't totally sold out yet, right, was he? And so he's learning and he's growing. And so um, this is the close of that first 40 years. Um, but, but here's the thing, right? Um, he might have thought he was finished because he thought Pharaoh's going to kill me and they're going to come and they're going to get me. But God said this. He said, I'm not finished with you yet. I'm not finished with you. There's time. I got work for you, right? And, and, and whatever you're going through right now, I don't care what you're going through. And some of y'all might be thinking, man, what I'm in is really, you have no idea, Pastor. It is deep. Yeah, it is. Is not any deeper than, than having the most powerful man in the world at the time gunning for you. I guarantee it's not any deeper than that. Okay, and Pharaoh was the most, most powerful man in the world at that time. He was the leader of the world at that time, right? And so the Pharaoh, uh, having him, it's not that deep. It's not that. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything. I'm not saying that at all, right, because you're going through it. There's pain. There's hurt. There's sorrow. There's struggle. There's challenge. There's yuck, right? But, but, but the reality is it's not that bad, and God's got you because you're still breathing. He's still got work for you. He's still got a plan for you. He's still raising you up. He's still training you. He's still teaching you. He's still growing you into who he desires for you to be. As long as we're willing to follow the steps that he puts before us. And think about this. He will pursue us. Moses did what? Did Moses go, hey, God, I'm here ready for you? Ah, he ran away. Have you ran away from God? I know I did. I ran away from his bride. And if I run away from his bride, I run away from him. When I turn my back on the church for a period of time, I, I turn my back on God for a period of time, and he still pursued me, and he still came to me. He still said, look, I'm not done with you. I got work. And so whatever you're going through right now, don't worry. If you've been running, it's okay. God's still got a plan for you. He's still willing to use you, each and every one of us. He's still willing to use us, and he wants to use us. 
Will we learn what he's got for us to learn? Will we learn what he's got for us to learn? Moses had two-thirds of his life left. If I've got two-thirds of mine, you got two-thirds of yours, um, uh, man, we got a lot of work in front of us. That means we're scratching the surface at best, right? And so um, so he goes, he shepherds for 40 years. He um, um, is, leads the Israelites out of, out of um, Egypt and, and uh, out of captivity. And something that we need to understand once he becomes the Hebrew, once he becomes the child of God, and once you become the child of God, this is still there, but it's not held against you. This is still there, but we can't live in it. It's still there. We need to keep it on the peripherals, right? What we came through, right? Moses needed to remember he was a slave. He needed to remember he's a Hebrew. He needed to remember that he was he was the oppressor. Even if he wasn't actively an oppressor, he was the oppressor nonetheless, right? He needs to remember these things, that he was the foreigner. He needs to remember these things. they got to stay out there. And you and I need to remember when we were the oppressor, we were the foreigner, when we were the slave, we need to remember that because it's what helps us to get to where we're going, right? And it keeps us on the track, okay? If we got it out here on our peripheral, we need to know because if I cannot help someone who went through the same struggles I've gone through if I act like I didn't ever go through them. Okay, if, if, if God never brought me through, if he never gave me victory over this, if I don't remember him giving me victory over this, I cannot help someone else gain victory over it. And it's not me doing it, it's God doing it, and God saying, look, see what I brought you through, see what this was over there, guess what? I brought you through it, you're where you're at, you're doing what I'm asking you to do, guess what? All of those that I bring to you that have gone through this and this or similar things, guess what? Use that to bring them through. Use that. Moses didn't forget that he was a slave. He didn't forget he was a foreigner. He didn't forget he was an oppressor. But the most important thing was that he was a Hebrew and he was a child of God. Are you ready to be the child of God that he's asking you to be? Are you ready to make that peripheral instead of in front of you? Are you ready to open yourself up to what God's got for you? He's preparing you. He's been teaching you. He's been bringing you up. Are you ready to step into what he's called you to do? And let this be peripheral that you might help others to step through the same stuff that you've come through. Are you ready for that? Please join me as we go before our Father. Dear Lord, thank you for Moses. Thank you for trials. Thank you for slavery. Thank you for oppression. Thank you for, for us being the foreigner. Father God, more than that, thank you. Thank you for us being able to become a child of God. Us being able to become your child. Father God, thank you for bringing us through this stuff. Thank you for us having come through that stuff. It's so important that we don't forget that. Father God, help us to never, ever forget where we came through, but help us also to never forget that we came through. Father God, help us to remember we're on the other side. And if we're not on the other side, I ask you to help each and every person here who's coming through something. I'm asking you to help them, strengthen them, encourage them, lead them, guide them, love them, show mercy to them, Give them your, your grace, Lord, and help them to understand it and receive it that they can come through what they're going through. Father God, help us to come through as Moses did the first block of years that we might step into our second block of years. And Father God, we step into them with your strength, with your wisdom, with your guidance, and at the devil's expense. Father God, we thank you for that. And we look forward to what you lead us to. I ask you to open our eyes to what you've got before us. Not asking you to show us everything, but show us the next step. 
Father God, there are some in here right now who need to take that first step. They want to become a child of God. They want to give their lives over. And Father God, I ask you to help them right now to do that. To right now say, Lord, I'm done. I'm done living the life I was living. I will not be the oppressor. I will not be the slave to my addiction. I will not be. The only thing I'll be is a child of, the God, of God, a child of the King, a child of my Savior. Father God, I ask you right now to help them as they, as they pray for forgiveness, as they ask you to forgive them, that, that, that as they ask you to be their Lord, that you would be their Lord, Father. Help them to know that you're their Lord, Father. Help them to understand that you're their Lord, Father, and that, that because you are their Lord, that now you can also be their Savior. Father God, I just ask you to help them, help each and every one of us to know that and to grow in that and to become who you've called us to be. You're equipping us, you're preparing us, and you're sending us out. And Father God, I just ask that your hand would be, would be on our back to push us forward. Your hand would be on our shoulder to comfort us and your hand to be before us to show us the way. I just pray these things in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.